what I'm talking about. I'm sitting in for your diva today. I'm Pat Evans, and we've been having some interesting talk today. Yes, we have about overcoming obesity. The gains far outweigh the losses. I'll tell you, we're talking with a guy who got it done. And it says, I tell you, it speaks volumes. That if you need to lose weight, want to lose weight, you can do that. Perhaps you've made it a resolution this year. Maybe you don't have a couple of hundred pounds that you need to lose, but I tell you, it works the same way. If you cut cut out some of the things you're eating, whether it's 220 or 200, it's still the same formula. We're talking with Jimmy Moore today. Jimmy is the author of Living La Vida, Low Carb, and he's on the book signing circuit. He's speaking tonight at Low Carb Central on 109th and Forest Helm, and he's brought his low carb buddy along who owns the store, Mr. Michael Kirtley, and we've been talking with them about the issues of being overweight and uh, they tried to talk me into uh, eating some low carb uh, stuff that I think (laughs) I am going to try. I actually do like some of the things that they had had mentioned. Just haven't eaten those on a regular basis, but I'm going to give it a try. We're going to give you some recipes to try. (laughs) We're going to give out a few of those too toward the the end of the program. But I want to thank you both once again, Jimmy Moore and Michael Curdley for joining me today. It's one of those topics, you know, we hear about weight and weight loss all the time. It seems like no matter who you are, you're not thin enough. And so it's, you know, no matter what age you get to, you're still thinking I could be five pounds thinner or whatever so it's something that stays on our minds regardless of who you are but the startling fact with all of that is that what would well you probably all know this both of you the figures of the number of people in our country Mm -hmm. just our country who are not just considered overweight but are considered obese this is a this is an extremely alarming figure yes it is 60 million or more yeah it's about a third of the population that's a whole lot of people yeah who from what i understand then of that were our body mass is so great they are considered in the category of being obese Mm -hmm. that's what that means Mm -hmm. so they may feel much like you did 200 pounds ago Mm -hmm. I want you I don't know how many people may be listening that have that kind of weight challenge but if it's a third of our population chances are there are a few people living here in Milwaukee and maybe tuned in whether it is or not we know all know people that maybe we could help or encourage in that area when I think of it I want you to talk about what what you did to begin that journey that you talked about and we're going to go through step by step in in a short period of time but you 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 first had an awakening that can be categorized as a mental or emotional awakening Mm -hmm. first right before you attacked actual dieting what was the diet approach we know the kid kind of you know he he (laughs) swam around in your thoughts for a long time right saying and, you were fat and you were saying get thinner yeah and and it got me thinking about okay what methods have i used already in the past and in the past i had actually lost a considerable amount of weight on a low fat diet i actually lost 170 pounds back about five six years ago and you gained it all back and i gained it all back and i talk about it in the book very openly that losing the weight was not the, the hard part it was the keeping it off that was the hard part. And for me, low fat just became too boring. I was too hungry all the time. I felt so deprived. I think I heard you talking about earlier, you, know, you don't want to feel deprived. I felt greatly deprived on low fat diet. So this time around, I was like, I want to do something radically different that I had never tried before. In fact, I was, I was totally against low carb. I, I thought all the lies about it of makes you, uh, you know, your clogged arteries and kidney problems and all this stuff. And I said, you know what? It's working for a lot of people. I'm going to give it a try. 
We're talking overcoming obesity today with Jimmy Moore. He's the author of Living La Vida Low Carb, and we are talking about the challenge he took on to lose almost 200 pounds. He lost 180 pounds, and he's sitting here live and in person to to prove it and to share his story with you today. We're going through that journey with him, and he brought his friend along, Michael Kirtley who is the owner of Low Carb Central. You want to be in on this conversation, we welcome your call. Call us at 799-1290 if you have a comment or a question. Okay, you started by doing what the first time? You know, I'm, I think it's really um, surprising and, and hard to take knowing that you had to do this more than one time. Why didn't, why didn't it work? Uh, when you, what did you do to make it work? First of all, the first time, did you do it too quickly? Uh, was it just because you, your, your, your body really was fighting hard to have that fat back on your body? Tell, tell me about that. Are you referring to when I lost 170 on low fat and then gained it back? Yeah. For me, I'm a highly motivated person. I, I just, I'm a self-starter. I get things done because I will them to be done. But when it came to food, I wasn't always that strong. And so that year that I took to lose that 170 pounds on the low fat diet, it was just surely, uh, sheerly just me, I guess, desiring it so badly that I was willing to do what I thought I had to do to lose the weight. But then I got to a point where that in itself became more obsession than management. Absolutely, absolutely, and and for me, it was hard to keep that up long term. I needed to find a method that would not only give me a way to lose weight, but also maintain that weight once I got off the plan, quote off the diet, um, which is what living La Vida Low Carb has been for me. It's it's something that I have never ever called it a diet. I from day one called it my lifestyle change. In fact, I started January first, two thousand four. And a lot of people say, well, was it your New Year's resolution? No, it was my new life resolution. Mm, that's very important. Absolutely. In the, in the consciousness that you're developing along with that as well. I want to go back again and ask you this. So it was more an obsession than management and methods is what I heard you say the first time. When you fell off the, the weight loss wagon and started gaining back, how long did it take you to gain 170 pounds back? And I remember the day. My wife said, will you go to McDonald's and get me some french fries? She did not and send I you said, to McDonald's. And I said, honey, are you going to make me go to McDonald's? <laughs> She's like, yeah, that'd be okay, right? And, I said, and we should say that your wife is a healthy, fit, oh, yeah. ne- never She's has, tiny, has been it makes overweight me sick. <laughs> person. <laughs> McDonald's was not going to send her over the edge. Uh, no, no. But um, And I actually said that day, okay, if I'm going to go to McDonald's for you, I'm going to get a Big Mac and some Isn't fries. Isn't that like sending an alcoholic to the, to the liquor store? Exactly, exactly. But you asked how she long She thought did, you were stronger, I'm imagining, huh? I guess so. Uh, it, it, was, it was very dangerous at the time because I was starving, starving. But um, how long did it take to gain it back? Would you believe four months? It was so you were me. just are, are you saying then that you were just out of control you had to have a fight going on that was trying to say stop it stop it stop it but you couldn't I was rebelling against all those feelings of deprivation that I had I was so hungry from from not being able to eat those things I wanted that I was making up for lost time mm. and I didn't care because I didn't you feel good. You were back good. in your I don't care mode. I didn't feel good. I didn't care. I didn't feel good. And I wanted to feel good again, which is why that method for me was not going to be sustainable. Hmm. So you you highly encourage then this new low carb approach. I do. To eating and maintaining uh, weight. It helped you lose and it's helping you maintain. I still eat low carb today because it is probably, in my mind, the best way for me and, and others to not only lose weight, but once you get there, you keep eating that way and it keeps your weight off too. Okay. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and start talking to Michael a, a little bit about that because I, I have uh, varying thoughts on the whole weight loss thing. And, and you said it, but I need you to, to mesh together your approach and then individualizing it. Because you said at the beginning, it's really individual. If a person like Jimmy had come in, what you would have said to him. I'm not overweight, what you would say to me. What uh, his wife would say, who's a fairly petite type of woman, what you'd say 
to her. We have a lot of people who listen, but you promote low carb. If I were telling someone to lose weight, what I would probably say, say to them is manage what you eat. Don't deprive yourself of all the things that are fun and that you like. Learn to listen to your body when you are know, knowing that you've, you're eating too much or you need to slow yourself down or don't eat something just because it feels emotional or it's at your, your, your reach. I'd, I'd go through a whole gambit of, of things that might help them maintain weight. But you are the low-carb guy today, so I want you to talk to us about why there's so much emphasis, and there is in, in lots of diets, almost everyone, put on low-carb intake. Well, that's quite a question okay. <clears throat> to begin with. Well, that's those are the, you, you know, you, I told you She's guys. She's good at I, doing that. <laughs> I, um, I try not to leave anything out. <laughs> I, I can tell. Uh, but first of all, I would say that um, low-carb is not new by any means. Nope, it's been around it's for not. decades, okay? And not to correct you there, but just to set the record straight. It's been around for decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not new. To answer your question about what would I say to you or, or someone even like myself who is not overweight or never really had a problem with weight, I would just point out that there are a lot of health benefits other than weight loss. Weight loss happens to be a byproduct of eliminating carbs and refined carbs or sugars. Yeah, what was the rest of your question? I'm sorry. I, I well, I'm, I'm wondering how, I guess I said all of that to say individualizing your approach and how you, you, you as a vendor are putting emphasis on the fact that there must be, I'm guessing that you're saying by what you do, there must be a low carb approach to not just maintaining weight or losing weight and maintaining weight, but reaching a healthier uh, body systemically. Okay. Is that is that is that better? Does that help you? Well, it, it does in that. Um, so, regardless of who, whether you're 410 pounds, my size, or his wife's size, or your size, you're going to suggest that. Are you? Is your verbiage? This is the way to get you to a healthier body. Yes, in general, I would say that's true. There okay. are a, a couple of it, uh, circumstances where I would not. Uh, suggest uh, low carb, which would be uncontrolled type one diabetes. I wouldn't recommend it in that case. Or if you have existing liver or kidney damage, I would. The other thing I would say is definitely you want to check with your doctor before trying any sort of change in your diet or your lifestyle. <clears throat> Are we all, uh, all a society that's uh, overcarbed? You think? I believe so. I think you know the average American right now is eating somewhere between 600 and 800 carbs a day, which if you translate that out into how much sugar they're actually consuming, it comes out to between three and four cups of sugar, raw sugar a day, which is just way oh, too much. Oh, that sounds so ew. Well, <laughs> it's funny. I was just in the it break really room. I uh, just pass this on. I was just in the break room looking at a box of granola and in a half a cup there was 52 carbohydrates, which is a quarter cup of sugar. Is that right? That's, That's what correct. it equals out to be. Yes. I bet you're going to stay away from those from now on, aren't you? I already do. That's not a hard one for me. <laughs> and that, that might certainly be a satisfying food. It might make you feel good. But probably in the long run, it's not going to help. Just look at the whole other side of this coin, which is diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're saying now that of the kids that are born in the year 2000, right now they're six years old, they say one in three is going to be diabetic. That's terrible. Sure it is. It has to stop. You're listening to the New Talk Radio 1290 WMCS. We're talking overcoming obesity today. The gains far outweigh the losses. We're talking with author Jimmy Moore today, who has lost 180 pounds. And his friend and sidekick, Michael Kirtley, who owns Low Carb Central. We're talking about getting that weight off. If you'd like to join in the conversation, do that at 799-1290. We're going to go to our phone line now and talk with Sheila. Hey, Sheila, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. You have a question for our guest? <coughs> well, actually, it's not a question. Uh, it's um, an echo of what he's saying. I lead one of those lifestyles that's extraordinarily busy. And I have, like many people, suffered with weight problems for years. And I've run the gamut. Um, years ago, I did Weight Watchers, lost 117 pounds, 
uh, went to the meetings, did the whole nine yards, and um, <coughs> gained it all back within probably a couple of years, um, and, and have just gone through all kinds of things. And about probably three or four years ago, uh, I was visiting my doctor, and she said, um, you're a candidate for that surgery. Hmm. Are you talking about bypass surgery? Yeah. Okay. I never thought of myself as a candidate for that surgery, and I most certainly had no intention of going through it. I have uh, a little high blood pressure. I also am asthmatic and um, have allergies. Sheila, do you currently have the weight gain? Uh, you gained it all back? Are you still at that weight then? I'm not at the weight that I was when we had that conversation. Because uh, what I realized was, and what your guests are talking about, um, is uh, I talked to a nutritionist and I talked to two of my doctors. And one of them gave me a diet that was for acid reflux. One of them then gave me a diet for high blood pressure. And when I compared both of the diets, <coughs> along with the conversation I had with my nutritionist and what I've known for years after having gone through all kinds of diets, was that there were several things going on with me. One of them was in my head, uh, but the others were, uh, when, when I compare these things, there was no way in God's green earth, um, once I put them both together, mm -hmm. I was going to have a lot to eat. So the thing that I said to him, I said, well, it looks like to me the only thing you've left to me to eat is meat and vegetables. When I said that, I remembered that years ago, and I do mean many years ago, I had gone on a very drastic uh, low-carb diet. And it was the kind that you had absolutely no carbohydrates in your system whatsoever. And the most immediate thing uh, that you notice once you've done that is you also have no appetite. The weight gain is very, very fast. And having remembered that and having you know, made the little revelation that I said, I went on uh, a low-carb regime. I don't call it a diet. Mm -hmm. Your guest is very right about that. It is the way I live. It is the way I eat. Um, <coughs> when I was listening to your program, I was actually just leaving uh, one of the fast food joints because <laughs> I had um, picked up which uh, today is going to be my burger day, a burger uh, and a cup of chili. Uh, it's going to be more carbs than I would consume in a day, but I've tossed the bread. Uh, the chili is very meaty, and um, <coughs> it will be the meal that will probably be my largest meal for the day. Mm -hmm. um, I end up going to any number of different functions, uh, I have a calendar that is extraordinary, and I have never been in a place or a function or at a time in my life recently where I could not follow this regime, where I could not maintain it, be it the holidays, uh, cocktail parties, meetings, you name it. I can always find something that I can eat because... We live in the cheese and meat <laughs> area, and I have had a couple of cocktail meatballs, a few pieces of cheese, maybe a piece of um, some veggies, and that's been my dinner a lot of nights, and I was not starved. Uh, I'm not going to advocate that it is always the most balanced, but when you leave, when you leave that kind of a lifestyle, you have to find something that fits. The other thing that I don't do is there is not one scale in my house. I don't get on it. When I go and when my weight is checked, it's when I check in with my doctor, and I do that every six months. They are very pleased. Uh, my blood pressure is in control. My acid reflux is in control. My asthma medications have been reduced. And the byproduct is that my weight has come down. I don't think about it. I measure myself by the new clothes that I have to buy and the old ones that I have to get rid of. Wonderful. And I think that uh, one of the things that I have noticed is, for instance, uh, this morning was, you know, just like any of the rest of my mornings, I was up at 5, I had 
things to do before I got to work, and I have to be at work around 8, 8.30. Uh, my breakfast this morning was cottage cheese, a half an apple, some decaffeinated tea. I drink water nonstop. Um, and I think that um, you really have to know what your guest is so right about the carbs. An average breakfast in my house used to be a couple of pieces of toast, carbohydrates, orange juice, carbohydrates, um, scrambled eggs, protein, maybe a piece of sausage, uh, protein, grits, carbohydrates, and then everyone was so sluggish they couldn't move. (laughs) Now, if I were to eat that combination, I will assure you, I would pass out. Mm, I'm right there with you, girl. <laughs> My body is so inclined now into this way that if I accidentally indulge by maybe not knowing or I get a fit, the, the one little thing that I uh, enjoy are uh, tortilla chips. So every once in a while, if, if we're at a Mexican restaurant, I'll have some chips. I was at a conference recently, and I forgot. And I had a few chips at lunch, and then they uh, they served something mm, kind of similar at dinner. By 8 o'clock, where I normally would have the energy to keep on going and not be done, I had to leave where I was, and I said, I'm sorry, guys, I've got to go to bed. Hmm. I was that drug out, and I was that tired. And if you don't believe it, just eliminate it a little, just just think about the toast. Think about the very healthy wheat bread sandwich you might have for lunch. Um, think about the very nice, you know, bowl of, you know, uh, cereal or, you know, we eat these things and, and we think they're very healthy and they are very healthy, but they're very healthy in very small doses. And I th- it, it's all about balance. And right now, like I said, if I indulge, I am going to be almost comatose. And I am not, I mean, I am so serious about that. I sat at my kitchen table one day and realized that I had dropped off. And my husband said, what is wrong with you? I said, oh, my God, I think there must be something in this that I didn't know was here. And so uh, I'm, I'm an advocate. I mean, I don't go out, you know, railing on everybody else, but you won't come in my house and find a whole pile of bread and all that other stuff because once it was gone, it was gone. And I'll I'll say it to you this way. A a good friend of mine said, I mean, no offense when I say it, he said, absolutely nothing that anyone has given me that was white was good for me. White rice, potatoes, white bread, flour, sugar, Pasta, he said, all of it has been detrimental to my health. And once that is eliminated out, then you can identify, I think, those carbohydrates that are not only good for you, but the ones that really help you. Um, You know, I I still eat vegetables, uh, and there are certain vegetables that I eat more of than others. I still, uh, you know, I I will have on occasion, like I said, a little fruit, but I'm very careful with that. And um, I have literally uh, these days, boundless energy. And the other thing that I'm doing that I am so appreciative of is, unlike your guest, my weight is going off very slowly. I appreciate it going off slowly because it also allows me the opportunity to get used to and accommodate um, because I've been through the big weight loss in a little while before, and I don't want to do that again either. So... uh, I just said all that to just say that your guest is very right. Uh, I am one of those people that does it, and I really appreciate it. Well, and the only other thing I wanted to ask was, where is Low Carb Central? It's on 109th and West Forest Home, 10940 West Forest Home, and he's speaking tonight at uh, 7 o'clock, and tomorrow the book signing from 1 to 3. And he has something he'd like to say to you, Sheila. Okay. So, Sheila, when's your book coming out? <laughs> Girl, you are so schooled in this. I am so proud of you, girl. I I really am. And I wish you so much uh, success with um, your continuedness in this low-carb lifestyle because it really is the best thing that ever happened to me, and it sounds like the same could be said for you. Yeah, well, uh, 
there's there's no book. <laughs> yeah, I was just <laughs> not yet anyway. Huh? No, there's no book, but but I will say that um, it has made uh, a heck of a difference in how I function, and um, I'm I'm one of those people who also in the city of Milwaukee uh, runs a fairly high profile. So for me, I have to be able to do the things I do and, and keep on going and not think about, quote, unquote, being on a diet. I mean, yeah. I'm in places where I don't have time to measure out a half a cup of anything. Trust me, it, it just wouldn't function. I, mm-hmm. I would be totally nuts by the end of the day. Sheila, before, <laughs> before I let you go and before we go to break, can you tell us what was your single most motivating factor for, for losing weight? When that doctor said surgery. Mm. You thought that that was the extreme. You know, when you gain weight, you gain it gradually sometimes. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what you look like. And you, you don't understand uh, certain things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's not that you're, you're unaware, but you are, uh, you're used to it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that, uh, you know, there used to be a time where uh, women couldn't get, in, w- couldn't get fashionable clothes and larger sizes and all that other kind of stuff. So you were more or less forced to kind of do it quicker. These days, that is not so. It's very easy. But it also is a demand of the type of job that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you, want to, you want to present your best to the public? Well, that and the fact that... I think that's a great motivator. Well, it, it is a great motivator, but I don't really care about that because I didn't care about it before. I didn't really... I mean, I, I, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I was going to present that, that image uh, no matter what size mm-hmm. I am and was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was concerned about my personal well-being and health. Mm-hmm. That was my motivator. Mm-hmm. So when that doctor said to me, surgery, and I've seen that surgery done on television, I know friends who have had it. They've been successful. Uh, some One has been unsuccessful. Uh, and I know how dangerous it is, but I'm also... Uh, not a kind of person that wants to be cut on. So I said, now, this is something that I can control. Mm -hmm. And when I threw the scale out of my house, it was because, you know, much like other people, I will have friends who say, you know, how much have you lost, this and that. And I said, I don't know. And I'm very honest about that, because I don't know. Uh, I kind of know where I began, and I kind of know where I am, but that doesn't concern me. As he said before, that is the byproduct of doing something differently Mm -hmm. and that is the mindset that I'm in well as Jimmy said we just wish you continued success with that you certainly got the discipline down and we'll be talking more with these guys on the other side of the break about that low carb approach and um, if if it's been successful for you certainly and and it obviously has been successful for Jimmy then that means to me it really works so hey well you know what for Christmas dinner I'll say this, if you can sign off, I had turkey, I had ham, I had chitlins, and I had a little piece of pork roast. So you hey. go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my kind of dinner, girl. <laughs> and I had some veggies to boot, some good greens, so, you know, I was happy camper, so I didn't miss too much. <laughs> well, that's good. I think that's the way you do it, Sheila. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for your Sheila. Wow. sharing so much of your story. Really appreciate it. We're and gonna I'm inspired now. <laughs> <laughs> See, you thought it was just going to be yeah, you it giving great. it today. That was wonderful. Ooh, yes, it was. Really appreciate Sheila today. And all of you who are listening as well, we're going to take a very short break right now, and we want you to stay right where you are. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about Jimmy Moore's book, Living La Vida, Low Carb, and some of those other strategies that are very necessary to weight loss. Don't go anywhere. Don't dare touch that dial. We'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to the New Talk Radio 1290 WMCS, where the community comes first. This is the New Talk Radio 1290 WMCS. Welcome back to That's What I'm Talking About. I'm Pat Evans. I'm sitting in for Cassandra today. We're giving her some additional time to get herself back healthy. You heard that voice yesterday. She was trying to love on you as much as she could, but it was stress in her voice a little bit more than necessary. So we collaborated on some some ideas, and guess what? That put me back in the seat today. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and I'm glad that you're out there. Today we've been talking with Jimmy Moore. Jimmy Moore has successfully lost 180 pounds and he brought along sidekick and owner of Low Carb Central, Michael Kirtley. We've been talking about overcoming obesity. 
the gains far outweigh the losses. And certainly we've been learning a lot more about some very good, healthy approaches to losing weight. And we have uh, determined that low carb is one of them. So we're going to investigate that before we go on with anything else. But if there's anything you'd like to say, we've got a few more minutes. If you want to give us a call and make your contribution, comment or question, you're welcome to do that. 799-1290 is the number to call. Well, we got a wonderful story from Sheila. And she is doing the the low carb uh, diet or she doesn't call it diet, but she's eating low carb effectively and it's working for her. She's successful at it. One of the first things in your book, your first chapter talks about becoming carb conscious. I'm going to have Michael reflect on this first because he was kind of, I don't know if that's the case right uh, prior, but he's your go-to guy now. So Pretty let's, much. yes, so <laughs> let's talk about uh, the first step approach to low carb dieting, you know, I honest to goodness, and, and I'm not saying this because I don't agree with it. I, I, I to a degree I do, but if you told me to go low carb, I, I just think I would, you know, go into a, a space with self talk that was really not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm thinking, oh, boy, as much as I love carb, and I don't think I'm an overeater at it, but just, you know, like last night, like I was explaining to you with the, I can't tell you the number of times I went back to get some more angel hair pasta and sure. rice. I just enjoyed it, but I don't do that every day. You know, that's the thing. But just tell tell us, uh, or, or tell the rest of the people, <laughs> no, I'm saying that because I'm saying don't don't talk to me, but to, to say to the rest of the people, what's the good approach? The first step, what, what's the best thing for me to cut out right away that's not going to send me into body shock? Well, Pat, I, I would just back up, just, just address something you said. You said if I recommended low carb to you, you would have some sort of a reaction. Oh, yeah. Or <laughs> I want you to know you're in the majority. There's approximately 60% of the people don't really understand what the low carb approach is or the con controlling carb approach. I like that, controlling carb. Correct. Mm -hmm. And actually, a recent study said that 25% of the American population don't even understand what a carbohydrate is. So that, That's not good. <laughs> actually, it's not. But I would really, just to go back to what I had said earlier, the first step, I would think, the first thing you have to do is you have to make a decision. You have to say, this is something I have to do. And I will say and we're again, talking now whether it's health or weight or correct, both. Correct. There has to be a decision involved and check with your doc, regardless of which approach you decide is right for you. Go to your doctor, get some baseline blood work done, find out exactly where you are so that as you go on your journey, you know the progress that you're making. Let me that's, ask you that's this. That's the first step. Okay, that, that's a great first step. Let me ask you this. Are we talking to people, too, while we're at it, who are 20 pounds overweight, up to 200 pounds overweight? Are we telling them the same thing? Should, should the person who's 20 pounds overweight also have some things checked out? Because certainly we already know that normal weight uh, and, and standard weights still could have some diabetes issues and other issues that need to be gotten under control. Well, that's very true. That, that is absolutely true. So, yes, I do, I do think that either case should check with their doctor before trying any sort of a dietary change or a lifestyle change. That's just sound advice. And how, how logical is it that we're talking about low carb for life? Well, because Sheila was very honest. She said she had a great time on, on uh, I can't remember if she said it was Christmas or New Year's now, but mm -hmm. that Christmas. was good fun eating everything she mentioned. Well, sure. Um, <clears throat> how logical is it to do it long term? It's probably the most logical choice you can make. Because as Jimmy said with, the, with some of the other approaches, it's easy to lose weight, but how are you going to keep it off for the rest of your life? You have to do something you have to choose a plan that you can actually do for the rest of your life. Otherwise, you're, it's, you're going to fail at it. You're listening to the New Talk Radio 1290 WMCS. We're talking about overcoming obesity. If you'd like to get in on this conversation, there's a few more minutes that you can do that. 799-1290 is the number to call. Jimmy Moore, how logical is it that we're talking low-carb for life? 
I can only echo what Michael just said. In fact, chapter 10 says staying committed for life. And I have totally committed myself to this lifestyle change because that's the only way I'm going to prevent myself from ever getting morbidly obese again. So are you, you've not just lost weight, but you're healthy as well? I am so healthy today. I was on blood pressure medicine, breathing medicine, and cholesterol medicine all when I first started losing weight. And three months in, I went to see my doctor and he said, you know what, Jimmy? Had you not started losing weight, you were on the verge of having a massive heart attack. And chances are you would not be sitting here I telling a story. I would not be here today had it not been for me starting low carb. So people that warn about the dangers of low carb, my only response to them is it was a lot more dangerous when I was 410 pounds than I am at 220 today. Congratulations, And live in La Vida Low Carb. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank that you. That is just so exciting to hear that coming out of your mouth. That's Jimmy Moore, author of Living La Vida Low Carb. He's lost 180 pounds successfully on a low-carb dieting plan. If you'd like to talk to Jimmy before we wrap up for the day, call us at 799-1290. We're going to go to our phone lines now and get Charletta in. Hi, Charletta. Happy New Year. Thank to you. Um, I was calling because I was trying, I bought a low-carb book, and I'm really not obese, but I, I'm like 5'5", five, five, and I weighed 162 pounds, but it's mostly around like the belly, and I stopped drinking a beer, so I knew that was the problem, but so what I started doing every morning, I just, because I'm busy, and I work two jobs, I went to the smoothies every morning. Is that good? I mean, so I can have some, so I take my medicine, my, I'm on, I have blood pressure medicine and cholesterol medicine, and I cut out the pork, mm -hmm. and I, you know, so. It, you want to know if smoothie is a good morning meal? Yes. Well, this is uh, Michael. Can I ask you, if, when you say smoothie, do you, do you mean a protein shake, or do you mean a smoothie with I a lot of fruits? I usually put mix it with orange juice, yogurt, uh, low-fat yogurt, and uh, banana and strawberries, Ooh. or some, like, some kind of fruit. Well, that's, that's probably about 200 carbs you're eating right there. Oh, which Jesus. Be, which, which would is be equivalent about to how much sugar? A, a cup of sugar. Oh, and, Lord. Which is about 10 times what I ate when I was losing weight. For a uh, whole day. <laughs> and I, I want to oh ask, my. Charletta, you did not yeah. get that recipe out of the low-carb book, did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I just, it, it was just to change them up. I, you know, I change them up different ways and stuff. And most of the time I'm using a yogurt. I don't eat yogurt, but I can eat them in a, in a smoothie. But I drink them in a smoothie, but I don't eat it. So I should really eliminate that, all that orange juice. I heard the other lady say orange juice is full of carbs. Yes, it is. And I would, here is my recommendation. You've made... The other first step, which is to buy a book. Now you should read the book. You should really study that book and follow it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, I'm only home about four hour out of 24 hours. So I'm always home because I do home care. And so I'm, I, I always have to have something I can just carry with me. Sure. There's all kinds of alternatives. There's protein bars, protein shakes. There's, there's a lot of options out there for you. Mm -hmm. um, now... If I, excuse me, if I come into your shop, I heard it say 119th in Forest Home, do you tell us, do you have the stuff in there that's better for you in your shop, or do you tell us the, uh, the way to, I want to lose about 20 pounds. No, he has a store. He's not just a consultant. Oh, okay. But he has a, the good carb, low carb stuff. Correct. It's a grocery store, but everything in it is low carb. Okay, that's why I need to go there. Yes. <laughs> but thank you so much. You thank too, you. Charletta. Thanks for calling. Happy okay, New Year bye. once again. Thanks for, for being a listener. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, uh, it may not be the easiest thing to do, but one thing we can say emphatically and that it works. So becoming carb conscious is one of the, the things that you guys put a lot of emphasis on. 